So, what do we want to talk about first? Do we want to start off with the Forbidden, or...? I mean, I guess, it's what you've got on the screen. Based. Have you guys done any testing with the Fiendsmith cards? Um, uh, I did about two hours of fucking around with a Phantom Knight Fiendsmith variant. Josh. My basic knowledge of the Fiendsmith cards is that I can... Uh, I can hand loop an infernoid with them. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so, so like, I didn't actually like, basically. didn't actually stress about learning them too much. I just knew that I could fusion Tierra for ten turn one if I played them. Yeah. So like, I didn't touch them because there was no like mages to like worry about with these cards, and like it priced me out. So I was like, whatever. But like, yeah. I played a lot of Snake Eyes along with you two. So, <laughs> what are our initial oh, thoughts look. of the ban list? Uh, so like, snake eyes. <laughs> yeah, there was probably more you could do there. Like, funnily enough, uh, I think there's been some speculation on whether or not like the deck can function as its own deck now. I think it definitely can. There's, there's oh, hundred percent it can. Yeah. You know, I just there's no That's... reason why it still can't function as its own. Deck. I don't know how strong it'll be. Like, the format will tell. And yeah. isn't it true? There's like new cards coming out that are kind of cracked. Yeah. So yeah. So the stuff that like. I'm just gonna say in the OCG right now, the best deck is still Snake Eyes, and it's still like at this point it's they're playing with like one Ash, one Wanted. They got a bunch of other stuff hit. The only the main differences between now uh, between us and them now is all basically all the extra deck cards they got hit here. Yeah, like we they still have Appaloosa, I'm pretty sure. Um, they yeah, they still, still have Apo. They still have Lacrima. They still have. They've, um... Do, it, do they still uh, have Baron? Apo. I don't know, but they don't play it. Yeah, so like... Yes, they do. So like... Whoa, if Baron's legal there and they don't play it, that is wild. Yeah, like, they've got the Azamania stuff, and again, I haven't looked at the Azamania stuff. All I know is that three of the cards are three more Wanteds, but I read over them, and I was like, I don't see how these Wanteds, but that's not my problem until the set comes out in October. Um, but, obviously, this goes to the first band, which is the Fiendsmith Lacrima. Um, from my understanding is that all this ban does is it means that Fiendsmith has to function in a Fiend deck, basically like Ubel, um, because they got the two not, other fusion cards. Not really. Like, you can still do stuff, be like, literally Jesse Cotton's thing on this was, yeah. okay, Lacrima ban doesn't matter because Necroquip exists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I, I understand the other two fusions exist, but it's like, are you going to play that in Snake Eyes now? Like, are you going to dedicate the Fiendsmith slots when you're probably going to dedicate it to, like, Fire King cards instead, right? Like... I mean, you can still do both. I guess. I guess we'll have to see how the how the format progresses. Um, Appaloosa like, Band's, like, pretty interesting. Was, to be honest, that's the only thing that, like, kind of upset me, because, like, it just makes Nib, like, a really good hand drop now, which... Well, I was I like... I like... But... Yeah. Huh? Well, I, no, I was just gonna say I like I like in formats where Nib sucks. <laughs> so, so like so that was the initial reaction that we had in the group chat was that like Nibiru is like now like really good, but like realistically, all the good decks that can play and beat Nib like can still do that. The only difference is we can't set up a a three mat Nib, uh, Appaloosa, right? Like I said with the with the Snake Eyes, all you do is you play Fire King cards. You now have access to um, Avada with um, U Bell. You already have it in your free fusion monster um like i don't know if appaloosa makes nibiru really good and even if it did like we were playing cross out in in um in snake eyes specifically because it beats hand traps for free and i don't see how we can't just do that again if nibiru becomes rampant especially with the mulch mummies as well fair enough like, it seems fun like i, I guess it's like just like unfortunate for like the road decks that don't have like inbuilt engines to yeah. like bait nib. Yeah. But like those decks suck anyway, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the thing, is that no matter what on the ban list, it's always gonna like make rogue decks worse, right? Like Baron getting banned hit sword soul, but that deck wasn't being played anyway. Um like obviously Calamity's gone, which is like another one of those I win cards, which I'm glad is gone. But like, <laughs> like there's. I can't believe they hit my Blackwing deck. This 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 sucks. <laughs> there's no shifter here. Like, we're we're gonna enter a format where we have 
two different mulch bummies. We've got Shifter in the format, and like, it just sets up these no game anyway. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I actually have no understanding of why people thought Shifter would get hit. It's the fu- it's the counter. I don't I don't get it. I never thought that card was gonna go away. I just want Shifter going because like it's just, it just creates a like it's the same with the mulch bummies. Why I just like him. It just creates a non game position where oh, know, I, look, drops I, it. I, and you just go, Sorry, yeah. I want Chief to band as much as the next guy, all right? I don't let's not let's not you know, I'm not I don't like Shifter. I hate this card. Yeah. But but like I don't see it ever getting hit like at all. I was hoping like, I was hoping for it to go to two, to be honest. I, think, I just don't uh, know I think how the it only that. world where Shifter is is hit is it somehow a Shifter deck becomes the best deck in the format. No, because which seems like an oxymoron because the second that uh, shifter deck becomes the best deck in the format, shifter stops getting played. Yeah, so like I agree that that's like the 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 solution to shifter is like in a shifter format, shifter probably doesn't get played in the main deck. Um, I'm pretty sure we saw that in cash format, right, where people started to stop playing shifter specifically for the cash matchup until it became like there were more other decks like pearly and super heavy. Um. Yeah, like I don't know. I, I I think it's a miss to not put shifter to two at least. I think if you put shifter to two, I think it would be a bit better. I think putting cards to two just doesn't do anything. Uh, shifter to two has the mathematical portion of it because instead of opening at thirty three percent, I think it's like twenty five percent of the time. So one in four games. Um, Let's not pretend that Konami cares about math that doesn't involve a dollar sign. I know. I know. Uh, Beatrice, the last card banned. Um, Rip. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, get a wreck, Muggle. <laughs> like, it's like, I knew it was coming, and it's a well-deserved hit, but, like, I man, I, what am I going to do with my trap BA now? It's so crazy <laughs> that, like, Laval Chain, like, was hit way sooner than Beatrice was in terms of when it came out and how problematic it was. When you think about it, though, it makes sense because the Marvel Chain was a rank four yeah. at the time. Every motherfucker was playing was summoning yeah. rank fours. Yeah, but then we got what we the got, hell is summoning rank six? Then we got then we got then we got uh, bestials, right? So during tier four, mate, we could just make Beatrice during our end board combo, and it was a problematic yeah. plan. And then we got it. Then we got it for with Finn Smith, where making a rank six is like a starting play. So like. Yeah, it's just it's just so funny that like this card survived so long. It should have been banned like way ago. Um, that's all the bans. Is there anything that's missing from the bans? Do you guys reckon? Oh, uh, yeah, snake eye cards. <laughs> yeah. I, in all honesty, princess needs to go. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but I, I think I said it before. I think that card is like absurd. Whoever printed that card should. It's not good. One of my favorite right. sayings leading up to the YCS was that every time I read Princess, it became like even more ridiculous. Like the first time I read it, I was like, "Oh, okay, so this card requires fires, right?" No, nah, it's generic. Uh, no. It's a link three generic. It revives. It doesn't target to revive. It doesn't have to pop your card to pop another. Um, it's got two seven for no reason. Like, yeah, fire deck. <laughs> Like it's ridiculous. It honestly is. Yeah. Like either either it it and like fix it so it's actually like a card, or yeah. just get rid of it yeah. because I, it's just too strong. It's, just it's like, like yeah, it's just it's way too generic and abusable. Like if this card quite literally said it requires two fires, and this card's probably fair. If it just be real. Like I think I think I agree with you. I think if it said one fire plus like whatever, I think it would still be as broken as it is now because you just revive what you link off with. Um, yeah. but like the fact that it's just generic is just, yeah. Um, well, speaking of Snake Eyes cards, like, <sighs> like the one action okay. or one pop. Yeah. This... Okay. Uh, let's, just, let's put this on the thing right now. Who the fuck remembered what evil was when they saw it on the ban list? Uh, I did. Cause I played a lot of dry yeah, well, I, I straight <laughs> up did not remember what this card was. I had to look it up. Uh, you, you're talking to Captain Herald of Perfection. All right. I knew exactly what this card was. Um, before we talk about the Snake Eye hits and what Konami probably should have done, um, we'll go over the gimmick puppet stuff. Now, what I've noticed with every single ban list overview is that either they say that it kills the gimmick puppet FTK, or they have no idea. 
and I am assuming, just like me, you guys have no idea if this kills the, the FTK. <laughs> I, don't, I, I have never seen this card before in my life. I have no idea. I'm going to be totally honest. I didn't know there was an FTK. Yeah, so so so, Cubic Puppet's got a field spell like Tempai where it makes them uninteractable um, and they just FTK you. I don't know if, this, yeah, okay. if, these, if these limits oh. prevent you from getting FTK'd. I've heard that it doesn't. If that's the case, why did we put two cards on here that were like the same amount of cards for Snake Eyes? on here to deal with the FTK if it doesn't fully deal with it. And if it does... I'm straight up looking up these cards up right now. Just to yeah, if it does, then I feel like there's a better card to hit if we're just going to make gimmick puppets obsolete. Because, like, just get rid of the... Yeah, because one thing, one thing that was said... Okay, so yeah. number four, the first one, the yeah. gimmick puppet of strings, yeah. does do burn damage for, like, popping stuff with three encounters. Yeah. So, and then sure. where's the other one? Sure. They they could they could literally say you have two battle phases and it would be the same relevance to me. Um, what, uh, finally, two battle phases. What I was gonna say is that somebody somebody said something that like um, this ban list feels like fixing up a lot of OCG mistakes, and like I sort of agree because we also have like Sangan summoning on here that's limited. Um, we have the, the obviously the Fiend Smith. They had to release. TCG exclusives to like yeah it's so strange um brand of fusion to one does anyone really care does this change anything for anybody uh, I, I feel like this is like something I remember somebody saying this is something that should have happened like two years ago and now it just hasn't it's gone for so long it just doesn't matter anymore Oh well, look, I yeah, I'm not mad about it but I've never really considered like branded a real threat yeah like I think, I think even though Brand of Fusion is to one, it's still the same thing. You just hold the Ash for like, Brand of Fusion. Like, like I like, didn't yeah. play, I didn't play in this format, in the branded format. So like I don't think it's too broken. But any format I've played, branded is just like outside of literally when they gimmick pop it, lock you. Yeah. That deck this is is free. And that's still around, which is great. I love non games. Um, I look. I yeah. personally, I believe that like putting limiting. Our spells at one is like hyper irrelevant when thrust is like a card. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, like there is like a small proportion there where like de decks are slightly better going second with you main deck three thrust to get say the branded fusion or I'm sure the card we'll discuss soon which is the grass. Cool. So like there's a world there where it like introduces good deck building, yeah. but at the same point, you know you are essentially arguing for like four copies of a card versus six copies of a yeah. card which i don't think it matters yeah we'll get there when we get to snake eyes about how many copies of a card uh opening of the spirit gates this is like a light slap to you bell i don't think this changes the deck fundamentally i don't think it changes much yeah. about the deck it's like it's like a consistency hit on top of like the um like the extra deck cards that got banned also yeah. affect this the new bell so like yeah it's like it's a tap which keeps them from going too crazy, but I don't think it makes a difference. Pot of prosperity. I have to look. Oh, yep. I have to say this. How are we supposed to like consider Ubel like a real proper threat? Is this like a real thing? Uh, apparently, yeah, apparently, after this ban list, it is the new best deck. Even though I am putting a massive asterisk on that because I still think Snake Eyes is there, but I just look. I don't know. It's like. The deck's cool, and every time, and I look, I've made the comments before where it's like, sometimes it's like I feel like I have to work very hard for just like 8,000 damage. But like, I don't know, there's very few times where I'm versing that deck and I'm feeling like I'm genuinely going to lose the game. Yeah, it's a. Like, I haven't. Deck. You know, it's like, a, like, it's it a good deck. Pretty, it me. makes some pretty nutty boards, which is like kind of scary, but also Dark Ruler No More just exists. Yeah, it's, like, it's uh, so strange. Um, the deck, the deck to me feels like it's it's Dragon Link, right? And I really wish that Harry was here to talk talk to us about this because when when I look at you, Bell, I I get the feeling of like D Link energy, where like the deck can do a lot off of one to two card combos, can like push through certain hand traps with like the right extension, and has like a very good repeatable game thing. But at the same time, I look at it and I go, I go, man, like. If I have Droll, you kind of lose. If I play Dark Ruler, you kind of lose. If I like, like, and it's just, it's one of those decks that like, it's not as 
it is sticky, but it's not as sticky as something like Snake Eyes, where, like, I look at the Snake Eyes M board and I go, it does not matter what the fuck my top deck is, I just lose here. Like, I need I, to open three hand traps, and I just didn't. Like, my impression of you, Bell, up to this stage has sort of been the catch you with your pants down deck. It's like, if you're not paying attention, or you haven't prepped correctly for it, and you go up against it, and you're reading all the cards for the first time, you're going to get cleaned up. Yeah. But, like... After, like, I figured out what was going on, I honestly felt like the only decent card in the deck was the hand trap that stops you from attacking. And, like, every other card just seemed to be, just be there, and I didn't feel, like, any board that was put up against me. Like, once I hit that stage, you know, it was it was fine. It wasn't a big deal. But... Like, I, I don't know how this deck goes about making, like, board through hand traps now, especially because, like, the loser has gone. Yeah, well, like, yeah. like so. they, just, they just make an Omni, right, and then they can make... Uh, Caesar, and then they can make the Unchain Link too with the Yammer and Grave, right? Like, that's the... <sighs> Look, this is why I wanted Harry, but it's fine. <laughs> Next hit, Prada Prosperity to one. I mean... I mean... <laughs> like, I'm kind of I'm kind of sad that I bought that set a while back, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, that set that you used all of a total of, what, two times? <laughs> and no, man, we used it in Black Wings. I think I think Prosperity is uh, obviously a very good card, but I also think that at the moment we've reached a point where like the only meta deck that was playing this was Tempai, and so this was real really a hit to like all the other rogue decks, like Ritual Beast or um, Sprite or the cyber decks that do need the additional consistency. Like, I'm more than happy to have Ritual Beast get a hit. I don't like that deck. That deck's mean. I totally like sit, watch, watching my opponent just play for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> to end on, end on a Link 4 and two Trap Cards. A Link 4, Look, a Trap man. Card, a Colossus, and uh, another Fusion. Like, la I just... Last time I versed that deck, I'm just sitting there getting Nam flashbacks from like 2014. Uh, okay, saying and summoning. Uh, it's like it, it is what it is. It's like putting card to one. It's like it makes it makes playing against Tempai feel a little bit safer, I guess, because you can feel like okay, cool, maybe my hand trap will actually stick because I just don't open the thing straight away. Yeah, my biggest issue is that is that Tempai still has three copies of this because they have set rotation, terraforming, and this. So like, realistically, they just brought it from five to three, <laughs> and it's it's another like the, card. Like, yeah. like the math like is just hit. Like this is my problem with consistency is it just doesn't do enough. But well, like, yeah, like, what are you gonna do? What? Are, how else are you gonna hit this deck about hitting it too much? Because like this is the only broken card in that deck. Yeah, my issue with Tempai is that, like, again, this is another one of those cards that just create a non-game, right? Where, like, okay, my opponent maybe shifted me, or maybe they just even didn't, and I get to set up my board, no interactions other than maybe a shifter, and I pass my turn, and my opponent goes, I activate a field spell that you have to deal with right now, and if I have a second copy in my hand, tough luck. Uh, but if you don't interact with this, and I normal summon, I win the game. And it's like, oh, great, I love... Well, at least it makes that feel better, because now they, at least they can't have the second copy now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, yeah, it's just... That's, that's like, the one good thing, is that if they activate Sangat Summoning, that's getting SP'd immediately, and I know that they can't have another one. Yeah. But, like... That's the thing, dude. It's, like, SP Little Knight, like, IP into SP is just the most generic thing. Every deck can do that. Yeah. And then, like, you have, like, just every other deck has things. For example, Mermail will just, okay, cool, I'm gonna do a thing and infantry pop it. Yeah, yeah. And the Sprite will have fucking smashes. Uh, Snake Eye will... SP it. Well, Snake Eye will probably just SP it. Yeah. Um, so, we're probably gonna talk the longest about that grass is greener, other than the Snake Eyes. Um, so we'll talk about Skill Drain being limited. Hooray, more uh, Floodgates are gone. Um... Uh, that's pretty much my entire opinion on that card. Look, I was one of those fellas who said this card should not be within 10 feet of a Snake Eye deck, but I had constantly, like, Snake Eye players flipping Skill Drain on me, so if it goes to one, I will consider that a W. It's... I, st I, still, call I still called them all cowards. Skill like, they were all cowards. Skill Drain, Skill Drain took that. Because it came back to three when, like, um, when 
uh, Enchantress. What's that deck? The uh, um, Adventure. Adventure. When the Adventure deck was at like full power and people were playing that. Well, it's still at full power, but like when people were actually playing it. Um, when Skill Drain came to three, I was like, oh, that doesn't matter as long as like decks have a way to out it. Like, it's still like unproblematic. And then we had Snake Eyes, and like Snake Eyes developed the. You, you get a floodgate, you set up your entire board, and then you flip that floodgate on the opponent, and the fl opponent can't play. And slowly we've just been cutting out all these floodgates. So I want to know if Deck Lockdown is going to be the next, like, the next three of side deck card for, like, Snake Eyes. That's uh, right, Deck Lockdown sucks. <laughs> yeah, I agree, but it's just, it's just funny that, like... <laughs> it's just funny that, like, these, these, these cards are just getting hit because Snake Eyes exist. It's the same with, like... Um, well, in fairness, if it wasn't Snake Eyes, it would be the next thing. Like, the, basically, yeah. like if Snake Eyes died, White Forest would be doing this, doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, um, it's just like removing these cards so they can. It's either they remove these broken card floodgates, or they stop making cards and abuse them. And by the looks of it, it's going to keep making cards and abuse them. So just get rid of them. Do we want to talk about Grass or Snake Eyes now? Go for Grass. Grass won't take long. Like. It's a, quite literally, as a 60-card deck enthusiast, I'm going to say every 60-card deck is going to play Frost, and we're still never going to see this card. Josh? Well, like, this this just makes my Noid deck better. That's that's my opinion. Like, okay. realistically, I don't know if there are, like, how, how applicable it's going to be. You know, 60-card like sixty card decks are still, like, I guess they're a thing, but even with three Thrust. But I'm not sure if it's going to be, like, I'm not sure if there's, like, any deck that's going to be good enough to, like, utilize a 60-card deck with Grass of Wung and be stable enough to, like... Yeah, um, I think... It's... I think, it's, I think like, it's a example, lot. I had, I had, like, my fuck around with a 60-card Snake Eye list, but, like, I'm not playing Grass in that. I think the coolest interaction with that Grass is greener, and, again, this is only the coolest because, like, it's just, like, a ha, huh, that's really neat... It's like still playing a forty card list and siding that grass with thrust. Like your opponent goes first, and now you have a really bomb card against like uh, against decks that like thin their deck out by like fifteen cards during their first turn combo. Um, but yeah, I agree with you guys completely. I think that this card is like, while it is pretty good if you're playing a deck that does get a lot of value off of it, looking at light swarms. Um, like, you could probably like make a pretty sick blind second light sworn tier list, maybe, maybe. possibly. But, but like, that's the thing. Like, what? What is? Uh, but then you just like go, okay, cool. I'm gonna go go activate my grass, and my opponent responds with dimension shifter. Yeah, yeah. And then you just cry for about ten yeah. minutes before concede. But then concede. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll talk about the snake eyes hits. So ash and poplar to one. Um, completely irrelevant, I think. Who Bonfire's still a three, we, all the witch package is still together. Yeah, completely so irrelevant. I'm not now, sure. Now just like drawing all. Poplar is going to be annoying as hell. Yeah, That's the Poplar, only thing. Poplar drawn is, like, really annoying. Um, one of my funniest things about this is what they did was they were like, Snake Eyes Ash, that card's at 12 copies. Let's put it to 10. Like, it's just... It's just... It's like... Can you imagine... If anything... Yeah. It's made it better because I have I now, like, don't have to care as much about trying to find room in my deck for other cards. Yeah. And on top of that, I've also cut the number of hand like cut the number of normal summons from my deck. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like it's I know I no longer have to be upset about playing two poplar. I just like at this point, you have less normal summons. So if you draw it, it is what it is. I never have to look at a hand of like double ash poplar again. Yeah. 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 That's it's like. That was my literally, I remember in Jesse, Jesse Cotton's video on this, like, he was literally talking about it, and he was like, wait a minute, my my Crystal Beast list is only playing one Ash, one Poplar anyway, who the fuck cares? Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's so funny, it's so funny to me, because, like, I was, I was, I was thinking, I actually talked to you about this, Michael, this was, like, a little while ago, I said, I said, probably what they should do is they should just ban Ash, right? And then you have to play, like, three Poplar, you have to, like, start thinking about how many Oak you have to play, and like, like, I think, I think Ash just should have been banned at this point. I think limiting it, like nothing, nothing has changed at all in my opinion, because my, I think if, uh, I think what they should have done, honestly, is ban Flamberge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a fairly popular idea was just banning Flamberge, but like, 
So one thing that I'm going to ask this because now we're basically at the end because the unlimits and the semi-limits don't change anything, but we'll still talk about it. Does this make you want to play more Yu-Gi-Oh? I actually I mean, kind of like this band. I kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of down for it. Like, I think, I, I, I think a lot of people are probably just gonna like either drop Snake Eyes or get more excited for the new cards, which is good. But then it also mm-hmm. like everybody who's like really good at Snake Eyes and understands the deck well will actually still be able to play it and still do well with it. So like in my mind, uh, my initial imprint when I saw the list was like I feel like this deck, this this ban list encourages good deck building at least for now and then we roll with it and see what comes out on top after that honestly i think a lot of people's doom and gloom about it is like this is still going to be a snake eye format like we've been playing snake eyes since this last year basically when, when did yeah. we start testing for the ycs uh, like so i started snake eyes testing uh at the very start of the year like just before new year's and that was before poplar came out yeah, so like we're basically we've been basically playing this format since we've been testing before, but we've been playing this format since Poplar release, yeah. and that was what back in January, Feb maybe, yeah. Feb. and we're now September, so like we're just we're just over the format. Like, apart from the basic RNG get aspect of it, I think this is still a very fun format, so I don't mind. But like well, I can, I do think it's time for something else. Like. At this point, I think it gives Snake Eyes the opportunity to be what I would personally like it to be, and that's, like, not really its own deck, but a good enough engine to, like, pump up fire decks and get, like, decent shit out of them. Like, yeah. my Infernoid list, for instance, like, I think the Snake Eyes cards make it ten times better. Yeah. And, like, I think if you can get... um, if If the deck can become that, like, a good enough engine that it makes other decks better... But it's not standalone. If you can get it to that point, then it's probably perfect. It's you know, like, you know, the, know dragon rules were, like the dragon rules were meant to be. It's so strange. I think because, because everybody who just wanted like all of them to go away yeah. is like obviously unrealistic. Yeah. But I, I get I get the feeling. But you know, it's not that bad. It's so strange because really? like I I I compare Snake Eyes to Tier Elements like a lot, and like trying to figure out the difference between why people dislike Snake Eyes, but Obviously, a lot of this was, like, hindsight on, like, tier elements being as fun as it was to play. Um, obviously, I played it during the entire time, but it's just, like, the community's backflip of, like, this This is cancerous, this is destroying Yu-Gi-Oh! No other deck can exist while tier elements exist. And then, like, you play the tier elements mirror and you just go, holy shit, this is the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh! I've ever played. And then you, you play Snake Eyes and you just want to play something fucking else. Like, like... Well, the difference was yeah. you can actually. You, there's no coin flip yeah. in the game. For example, like in Tillament, you didn't have to worry about opening free hand drafts every game. Yeah. You could basically play any hand in the mirror, which yeah. is why Tillament mirrors were much more skillful and more fun. Where it's just like the Snake Eye mirror is just like, cool, I won the die roll, but I opened one Ash and my opponent has free hand traps. Like, what do I do? Yeah. But like, I, I, what I was saying was like, with Tier Elements, they were around for like, what, a year and a few months, right? Basically, they were living as long as Snake Eyes has, like, after the Azamina cards come out, they'll relatively have lived as long as Tier Elements lived. Um, and I could not get enough of Tier Elements. Like, when they when they killed it before, or when Cash came out, I went, man, that really sucks. I really wish that this deck stayed around while Cash Tiro was out, and we could have seen how good of a dynamic that was with snake eyes like right now for the september 2nd list i wish they just killed it but like i don't know i don't know what the big difference between that is other than like when i sit down and play snake eyes it's like i have to open the three hand traps and deal with the rng barrier but with tier elements i can just play every single time um and i don't know what they could have done to fix it or change it it just sucks that like I guess they pick Snake Eyes to be the deck that would be around for a year and a half, and it's actually not that fun in totalitary. Like, at the beginning, when I was testing before Poplar and Princess, I thought the deck was really fun. I thought, like... There was a stage where we were like, the mirror for this deck is kind of insane. Yeah. Like, we thought it was generally pretty good. And, yeah. like, we were... I remember we were playing online, and we were, like, winning mirrors handedly, and I'm thinking, like... My first impression was like, 
this is just nuts. Like the mirror is like it reminded us of Tear almost. It was like the mirror was just really good. Yeah. And then I think I don't know if we were just like slightly ahead of where people were at, so we were slightly better. But like once everybody sort of caught up and it flattened out, it just got ten times worse. Yeah, because I don't know like, what happened. I think I think I think I think I know exactly what happened. It was that damn pack. That damn pack fella did really well with a snake eyes list playing like twenty hand traps, and he's like, "Yeah, you just have to hand trap the opponent, and that's just how you play the game now." And as soon as that happened, there was like a dramatic shift in how well I felt. Like I felt about this deck. Because before, when we were doing that, we were still playing things like Thrust and Talents. And, like, I was playing Instant Fusion. And, like, those were the cards that were... Like, right, yeah. right? Like, like there were, like, there were like these, these edge cards that got us over in the mirrors. And they were, like, really good. And then it just became, like, hand traps. And it's like, <sighs> did I open did I open Imperm Ash Mourner? Or did I open Imperm Ash Ash, like... Like, well, that's a, that's like another thing to take into account. Like these tech cards are, like, for example, the rekindlings or instant fusions. Like that's more fun to play with than hand traps. Yeah, yeah. I hand am. traps, <laughs> hand traps. While they are a necessary evil, they are boring as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I who doesn't like you're seeing a rekindling resolve? I actually, I actually agree with this so much. Actually, like, like I disagreed with rekindling when Kalen dropped like rekindling. Uh, it was really hype at the 3v3. Like, him dropping a rekindling for four was really hype. But, like... I'm uh, so glad I told him to do that. I thought that was, like, the secret sauce. I was like, mate, just do this. I was Trust me, I think it just... Econ, uh, tribute my fella to take your princess so I can revive back my Grunix. And he was over here rekindling for four. And it's just, like... <laughs> um... So we'll, we'll we'll move on to the to the semis. Um, well, the only one I care about is Lunar Light Tiger. Yeah, I genuinely, I genuinely believe I can cook an extremely based Lunar Light Snake Eye deck. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I watch think... me, watch me. I will play it when I come to Perth next. The only one Be that aware. I'm just going to care about is titles or two, even though I still don't think that you play uh, that in Mermails. Title the two. I wish there Double were title, water, let's go. Better water dumps to, like, dump. But, uh, Who the fuck is dumping? It's just a level 7 extender. It's, yeah, but it's a level 7 extender that requires me to be playing. <laughs> um, we'll argue about that later. I don't think anything on this matters. Um, I don't think it changes anything. Uh, I'm gonna say, this is literally, let's put it this way. The way, when I see semi-limits come through, like, did en literally any of these cards... Uh, top end event ever. Yes. And the only one I can think of is Colossus yes. topped when in Ritual Beast, right? Yes, yes. I think Colossus like, is going the wrong way, but at the same time, Colossus loses to an Imperm, and that was but, still And true. also, is yeah. like, is any deck ever going to play a second Colossus outside of literally Thunder Dragons? No, no, you're right. Then who, it, who the fuck cares about this card being a two? Just All take right. it to three. Finally, on Limits. So time seal. So we can transaction rollback this off of the Beatrice, right? And that's a really good play. I'm kidding. This card, this card could have come off the list like ten years ago. It's like, wasn't that, wasn't that the whole game that it was like the worst card on the ban list? It is, yeah. I I legitimately didn't know what this card did. I had to. This is another one I had to look up. Michael, it skips the opponent's draw phase. Okay. So instead okay. of losing to six cards, you're losing to five. Um. But they, but you before they still in the draw phase before you can activate this card. Yeah, exactly right. Sure. Anyway, uh, I'm again knight to three. Um, my, I'm very hesitant I, about this card, <clears throat> but that's usually just because of. Um, I mean, I sold is banned now. I don't yeah. think this card does too much. Anything, I, guess. I know you say I sold is banned now, but it's just like there's something about Armageddon Knight that always just scares me because I think this is just a, a um, what's the word? Going off of the past, it's just every time Armageddon Knight's at three, and something broken regarding Warriors comes out, it just becomes a bit more scary, mainly because it's not once per turn, but. Who knows? Armonite yeah. at three is like a trigger statement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, whilst I understand, I also sit here and go, well, 
I saw, like, there is no broken ones at the moment. I don't know of anything broken coming out then, so... Yeah, who cares? Know. This is like one of those hindsight things where you go, yeah, on September 2nd, 2024, their biggest mistake was unlimiting Armageddon Night, and it is now one again. Um, no, this is why we say, this is why why we say called... ignorance is bliss. Like, so. this is why I called Nisha a psycho, because he was like, oh yeah, Armageddon's going to come back to three, and then we should just bring back Summon Sork. And I was like, yeah, I think you should shut up. Uh, well, Summon Sork <laughs> is getting an errata, right? I mean, a Summon Sork is back, isn't it? Or is it not out yet? I because don't the think it's not out. back yet. Um, or it might I know it's been like officially it. errata, but I don't yeah. know if it's come back yet. I just... Uh, look, I guarantee errata or no errata, I could break this card. Okay. I could do some shit again. Um, Red Rose Dragon, uh, I like this card. Um, I still like this card. It's still slow. Does it do it? Like, now that Needle Fiber's gone, does this card actually do anything, like, too crazy? No, because there aren't really any good seven starters outside of, like, Fenrir Unicorn, and even then you probably aren't playing Red Rose Package for it. So, like, you can make a Synchro 10 that's, like, not barren. So, it's just like, what, I was going to say, what Synchro 10 are we making it is? Like, uh, obviously the Ice Jade. Wait, that requires waters. Uh, obviously, uh, Sheng Yang, I think. The, the yeah, Sheng Yang is like the only good one that comes to mind. <laughs> you can make two of them. <laughs> you can't um, see it, but I just put my thumb up and that's it. Uh, <laughs> that's my response to that. Kieran, back to three. God, there was a time where I thought this card would never come back. Um, plus yeah. fire unlimited because it's got Narada, making it basically useless. Wait, they actually errata this card? Yeah, they, I, I heard they errata it, but I don't know what the new text on it is. I'm pretty sure it's I'm just looking a hard right once now. per turn. I'm pretty sure that's oh. the change, is they just made it a hard once per turn to, like, uh, float. Fair play, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, you face up four major control monsters with a kind of effect you can... If they face up a four mage monster you control, it's destroyed by Battle of Card Effect. You can special summon this card from your Pendulum Zone, then yeah. inflict 500 damage. Yeah. You're going to use effect, that's the Pendulum Scale effect. And then the card text is if this card on the field is destroyed by Battle of Card Effect, special summon one from your deck, hand or deck, sorry, except for itself, and you're going to use it once per turn. Yeah, so before it wasn't once per turn. Mm, fair play. Uh, AFD, <clears throat> this card, since a rider has not been relevant, it can stay unlimited. And Deng Long, same thing, except not with the errata. It's come out, nothing changed, it's irrelevant. It's just. I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed at this list because it feels like it doesn't do much. I, guess and I, think, the, I think the bands are big, and then everything else is kind of meh. It's kind of whatever. Yeah. Josh? Yeah, look, like I said, I think there's a, a small part of me that says, like, it obviously it's done some good things. No Hot Red is kind of cool. Like King Calamity, no, no that is kind of cool. I think, like I said, a small part of me probably thinks that the idea was to try and suggest better deck building for better formats. But as we all know, most Yu-Gi-Oh players are degenerates, so they'll probably turn into something awful. Like, I believe the intention was good. I'm happy with it. But who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, At the end of the day, I, I don't I don't hate this list. I feel like it probably could have done a little bit more. But, like, I feel like Hanami are also trying to, like, be careful. Because whilst we don't like Snake Eye format, like, Snake Eye is the lore deck at the moment. Well, which is the lore deck. So they don't want to kill the, the, the lore deck, basically. Because that's where they think all their cash is coming in at the moment. <clears throat> so there was, Sorry, a, this... there was the post. So this got me... I wasn't, like, annoyed about it. Um, but I think that there was a little bit of miscommunication um, with Konami and us. And I made a little bit of a post saying that, like, I, I really find it funny that, like, people complain that Konami doesn't communicate with us, but we were the ones that bullied them off of communicating with us, right? Like, just the funniness of just, it started off with six-month ban list, then they changed it to three, then they changed it to whenever, then they changed it to um, whenever but not telling us, basically. And now we're back to them communicating it a little bit, and they got... 
like <laughs> they got a little bit um i guess the word would be shit on on social media i'm not sure if you guys saw the host horse posts or anything like that it's literally what i was about to say all i saw was endless memes about a horse throwing up and i i I knew originally when I saw that I lacked context and I'm thinking what in the hell is yeah. going on here about yeah. so that went Go back to my degenerate comment <laughs> yeah, that, that went that went every single time and I'm trying to find the post um, but when they announced um, let me find it when they announced that the balance was coming on the 31st um, they said something like this could be the last time that you guys see Fiend Smith or you, Bell, and it's a bit misleading because obviously this won't be the last time that we see either Fiend Smith or you, Bell, or Tempai or any of these decks. Um, so it's just it's just irritating because on the one side I agree that like Konami Konami should get a little bit shit on. A little bit, but at the same time, it's like if you want them to communicate with us, probably don't shit on them. But they do deserve it sometimes. Yeah, they, they do stuff that they, that they do deserve. Yeah, what you're talking about is the difference between healthy criticism and unhealthy criticism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the the throwing up, the throwing up um, horse thing was, like in my opinion, quite disgusting. I didn't like it at all. Um, because it was even branching onto like, onto like other, um, things, um, like other posts. I'm pretty sure I saw like Farfa posting when's ban list on the Pokemon fucking worlds thing. And I was sitting there just going like, this isn't real. This is just like, yeah, it's like that kind of shit. You said that like, okay, when, when is enough enough? Yeah, and I think uh, I think as a community, you you just don't know when enough is enough. Yeah, it's so strange. Um... I'm just trying to find uh, degeneracy. Can I find it? No. Fringe. Um, do you think that there was anything missing from this list? Lamberge dragons. Just Lamberge. Well, I mean, it's quite literally. We've said this thing that we think they should have done more to his snake eyes and like ban Lamberge. Probably fixes a lot of the problems people were having. I personally would prefer it like i said if we kept flamberge but princess went away i mean that's also an option like i'm not sure which one's better to be honest i hadn't thought too much about it i like flamberge i think flamberge is something that's snake eye specific it's also a card you can't draw i think in context i think the card itself is fine i think the reason why it's like so abusable is because you can just loop it with princess you get to not only do you get to float but you get to use it to, like you get to put it back on the board to reset something like i think if princess went away and you either had to decide whether or not to use its effect to float and put it off the board or like leave it on the board and then uh use its effect to summon like if you had to make that decision rather than getting both like Obviously, there's a world where you play multiple Flamberge Dragons, but I think, you know, if you're willing to put multiple Flamberges in your deck and draw them, then that's the pack. Them's the breaks. That's the payoff. I think, you know, one thing that is interesting that I didn't actually consider is that there's obviously you can't Ash for Ash anymore. That's that's obvious. But there's like the Flamberge revive of like um, Ash is probably not good enough. You probably want to like summon oak and add back ash but then like are you like it's interesting because then you play by itself is then really we become play. everybody become the birch enjoyer yeah like you're probably gonna have to play birch again right like well this, we're this, out here. this is what i meant about playing like the snake eyes in, in like engines that have the level one fire monsters you know like it might actually make the race car deck decent you know it's good for infernoids like if you there i think there are like having the one ash and being able to search car like genuinely other targets 
you know or maybe you want to play like a blind second deck and search kurikara like there are worlds where it's applicable yeah that's like i think uh, i do like in the end i do agree with that ash probably something that should have gone to one i just think they should have done more to the deck i think but whether or not with like taking into account like they put Poplar to one, they banned a lot of the main extra deck cards. Whether this is going to be enough, with I guess time will tell. Oh, yeah. like Poplar to one, I am all for. I personally believe that if you're playing multiple Poplar up to this point, you're a coward. That includes me because I've done it. You know, like I did it at YCS, and my first opinion was like I can play one Poplar because I do not care. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, that was when we were first testing, right? We kept calling everybody cowards, and then we eventually caved. That was exactly right. This is where Birch and Joya came from, because rather than play the second Poplar, we just started throwing Birch in, and then we all realized it was just ten times worse. <laughs> but like, like Birch is just, like, so much worse in almost every, on almost every point. And then I just kept <laughs> putting Birch back on my deck anyway, because I'm a Birch and Joya. But then, like... I, for me, there was no greater pain than going, yeah, look, I'm playing a 50-card, like, Infernoid list. I can get away with the one pop and never draw it. And then to, like, open my opening five and open, like, Bonfire and my one-off Poplar, I'm like, that, that is soul-crushing. <laughs> but now I don't have a choice. So now that that decision's been taken away from me, you know, I don't have to worry about that. That's it's not my fault anymore if I open those hands. So I'm all for it. <laughs> um, are you guys interested in Rage of the Abyss? Yeah, I mean, no bro. Yeah, sure. Nobody knows about all. this deck. This deck's awesome. I mean, people, are, everybody knows about this deck. Right? I I am genuinely excited for Mermails. Um, I. Am not excited for dealing with the mulch mummies or shifter, but that does not change my opinion that shifter should not be in this game. It's a very strong opinion. I mean, I get it. Shifter is very nearly bore like borderlining on one of those game, one of those cards that are genuinely so unhealthy for the game. That it's like a problem. I get it, but I don't think like we've always had the constant like uh, there's always been some sort of constant that allows like the reverse side of the non combo decks to like function in a high like a, a faster format. Like even when Tier was the deck and we thought that format was the nuts, Flunder was still played because it could still do the same thing. You know, it's like, it is, it, it's the great equalizer. And like, unless you can't remove the great equalizer without either introducing something that's like as good or just slightly worse. So like, I think if you want to get rid of Shifter, I understand the temptation, but I think you also need to take into account the world you are creating if you say get rid of Shifter altogether. Um, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, my opinion isn't just... Well, I, I would love for Shifter to get banned out of this. Um, but at the same time... Because, like, I th I think the Mulch Mummies... I'm not as annoyed at them as I am at Shifter. I think my biggest complaint about Shifter is that it's a card that's allowed access to other decks, but not to, generally, the better deck, right? Um, so... It's generally in these really bad decks like Flu, where my opponent does have a one card combo that I can't interact with anymore because of the shifter. Um, and the main problem is because shifter exists. Um, well, whereas... this is my point. This is why I call it the great equalizer. It's not meant to be played in the best decks, man. It's meant to be played in a deck that can beat the best deck under the right circumstances. That's yeah. like whole idea yeah sure so like I, i'm I, not i i understand i understand these things it's why it's why a lot of our floodgates are at one right like like you still have these cards like gozen and um rivalry that if they're flipped against the best deck you win the game and that like allows worse players to steal games from better players um 
my biggest issue is that Shifter is one of those cards that is also being played by really good players. So you have to deal with that as well. So if Shifter's good, then you have to deal with it more and the outs to it are much less. Um, so for example, for example, when, when Snake Eyes was really popular and we had that Runic Stun variant, where after that Runic Stun variant did really well, um, people were boarding like six copies of like back row removal in Snake Eyes in the side deck. Um, but you can't do that for Shifter, right? There's not like a card that deals with Shifter without like playing trap cards for every single Shifter variant that you could verse from Flu to Tempai to like, um, you name it, like set five deck. Um, well, like, is, is there a world where they either like bring back Cold By or like release some sort of deterrent and then you can keep Shifter um, and, if you're, and that you're happy? Well, they were, they were getting close to it, right? Um, like, Snake Eyes... The Snake Eyes combo to, like, deal with Shifter if you get Shifted was, like, probably the, the best way is that the best deck has a way to deal with it inherently. Um, obviously, it started off with, like, a... You make a rank rank one, either the Lyra Lust or you make Fucho and you just pass turn. But then it turned into, like, you IP with Field Spell, putting Oak in the spell and Trap Card Zone so that when your opponent normal summons, you can SP them and that generally deals with it even if you're versus Tempai. And, like, obviously the variations got changed and there's, like, even a way to, like, make Appalooza where, well, back then, obviously, uh, where you make Dark, take the Shifter, you put another body on board and then you make Appalooza there and they have to deal with the Appalooza now. Um, but, like... Now, this is a little bit biased, obviously, but I've been testing Mermails, um, and the three biggest cards against that deck are both the Melch Mummies and Shifter. And the biggest issue that I have is if I play, if I choose to play Mermails, right, let's say I go to Locals with Mermails, right? I'm not thinking that Mermails is the definitive best deck. I think Snake Eyes probably will be at that time. But let's say I go to Locals with Mermails, and Little Timmy is my opponent. And my little Timmy opponent goes, draw face shifter. And I look at that shifter and I go, I only have one call by the grave and I did not draw it. Go ahead. And then little Timmy kills me. And then game two, I go, all right, I, I'll go, that's it. I took the L game one. Uh, the chances of him drawing it again are 33%. So let's go again, shifter. And I go, okay. All right. Cool. We'll go next round then. That's like my biggest issue is that like it's it does not allow me to the the chance to even get out of the position. It just says that I'm in the losing position and I can't get out of it. Um, it's a skill removal card. It's a it's yeah. a card that essentially negates skillful play. Is why you're upset about it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But like I wouldn't have an, uh, an issue with it if there was like if there were cards that let me add back in a little bit of skill if I opened it. Like, and I don't even want Call by the Grave to go to three, but, like, if that's what it takes to deal with it, then may as well. I guess, okay, I guess the real question here, then, is do you believe that there's ever going to be a functional point of this game where it is 100% skill-based? Uh, I mean, yeah, right, like, tier. Like, so, so sorry, this this goes back to my thing about about when I was playing Tia and I would get shifted and I verse a little Timmy, I can make Baguska and pass and I know I'm not getting killed because Flu has a horrendous time dealing with um, Baguska outside of the, the the spell. So, like, this is what I mean by, like, there needs to be a way for me to be able to deal with the shifter if it requires me to play an extra deck card other than a card that I have to draw to deal with. It has to be, like, something that I have to take into account previously and reward me for better deck building, right? Like, mm. if I didn't play Baguska and Tia, I would have lost all my matches against Shifter. That's why I played that one copy of Baguska over something like, well, I played Usa, but there were, like, other cards that you could play in that slot instead. Um, where, like... Ah, uh, the old horse. <laughs> so, so, like, again, my issue... My issue is that, like, at the moment, we have to deal with the... I have to play cross out with shifter if I want to play Mermails, which is heavily a graveyard deck, or I have to play neg myself by one to make a synchro monster that turns off the mulch mummy guards, which is probably the better way to deal with shifter. 
is to just pass and hope that Mulch Mummy carries you, unless you're versing Tempai. So, like, it just... Again, it's like one of those, like, draw the out type scenarios, but it's from a card from my opponent's hand because they opened it, right? Um, like, I don't mind if Timmy drops a Mulch Mummy on me. Like, I wish that... I hope, and I wish that Mulch Mummy is a super or, or common for the green one, because, like, if Timmy drops that on me in draw phase, the game completely changes, and it's not to the point where I just lose. It's close, but it's not like a I just lose point. Um, all right, all right. I know what would have fixed it, and this is what they should have done this ban list. Gamma back to three. Yeah, Hell yeah, yeah, bro. Oh my goodness, no. Don't talk about Gamma because I had this I had this conversation. They should have put Gamma to three at some point because the Mulch Mummies, to me, seemed like a card that was designed to make going second better. And I'm just staring at Gamma going like, I know why you guys ban this, but at the same time, this card pr like protects me from Shifter. I understand that like if I activate a Roto and my opponent drops Droll and I Gamma them, I win the game. But at the same time, if my deck loses to Droll, do not drop Droll on a fucking spell that says Search. Do it on a monster. Like... Oh, no, look. In all honesty, like, three Droll... Like, formats where Droll are really good, and then having three Gamma around, I think are excellent formats. I think it actually, like, promotes you to make better decisions in games. Yeah. Like, I, I... Personally, I believe if you ever hit the point where you're gonna go, like, you know, like... Obviously, we've all done it, where there's, like, we've gone, all right better have it and then they don't have it but like if you're gonna play that game when they have five cards in hand and it's like the first thing they're doing that's on you <laughs> like um, and i think i think that's i think that's like the biggest thing is like gamma gamma to me what they should do is they should release gamma 2 and gamma 2 should say it doesn't say destroy that card it should just negate that card because in my mind gamma was only there as a really good way to stop Shifter. That was the only time I was using Gamma, was just to stop Shifter, and it felt really good doing that. Um, because because it negates and destroys, it becomes very awkward when you go second, and your opponent goes Normal Summer Snake Eyes Ash, and you go Fat Gamma, and they go, oh, pass. <laughs> um, which is the problem with Gamma, right? Um, but like, yeah, I just, you give me, give me something to deal with Shifter, and I will stop complaining about Shifter. But at the moment, Shifter is uh, uh, another card like Crossout Designator, where if my opponent activates Crossout Designator, there's no card in the game that helps me deal with this card, so that is resolving. So, like... Nah, hit him with the Delta. Yeah, well, like, obviously there, <laughs> obviously there are very specific situations where, where... Yeah, but Shifter, the only out is, like, you have to play Crossout Designator and one Shifter and not open the Shifter... Or you have to play cross out and hope to draw it over the three copies of Shifter, which is why I was hoping that like Shifter would go to two, or banned, or one, or anything. But because it's at three, now if I verse a little Timmy and they have either the Mulch Mummy or Shifter or both or three, I kind of just lose games just because they exist, right? And I feel like making... Shifter is a card that should be over at zero or at three. Like it always it feels like Maxi, it's just a variance card and just it's annoying to deal with. Yeah, but you put it to it two, feels like right? worse it's still than variance, but like I don't have to Well that's just, it's I, if if it's at two, it's the exact same as when Maxi was at two. Uh sort of, right? Um The only difference is you're not dealing with it every game. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I don't want to do with. I don't want games. Well, no, I mean, because the, the thing is, when Maxi was at two, every deck was still going to play Max uh, two Maxi, and so it just felt like cool. It just I, your opponent still sees the Maxi and it's at two. It just feels the same. But like the only difference being with Shifter is only Shifter decks will play will still play the two Shifter. Yeah, that's why we should. No, play I agree. <laughs> two, two, two is the middle ground where I will gladly offer my hand to the shifter players and be like, you can have it at two, right? Or one. I will gladly this accept this. This is a compromise. Yeah, that, is, that is my compromise, is you can have it at two or you can have it at one, right? Two is the most I'll go to. If you have it at three, it's a little bit problematic. At two, I can justify it in my brain because you've got 25% chance. At three, it's one in three games. So I'm going to see it at least once against you. If I'm lucky, right? Like, oh. 
<laughs> like, sure, I'll be the unlucky sob that's at uh, finals of, of the round. I'm on the bubble, and my opponent's playing the one-off shifter, and he's opened it three games in a row. But hey, if that's what happens, that's what happens. My brain would be much less mad at that than it being at three. I'm pretty sure if that happened, you would sit there and you'd be pissed off. Yeah, I would say, let's ban this card, but that's, that's beside the point, okay? Like, <laughs> my brain will eventually cope with it in the way that, like, man, my opponent was just really lucky. <laughs> um, I wish that they put the cards that they put to two to three. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know why these guys just went to two instead of just going straight to three. We're just it's, testing. The that, it's, just, it's the same thing that they always do. They're feeling it out. Why can't I have three Lunar Light Tiger? Please? Yeah, but it feels, Please? Like, it feels like we've felt it out for the past 25 years, Michael, and nothing has felt good. Like, it's always just gone straight to three the next list. There's not a card other than Malicious that has moved around the one to two to three slot as much as, like, and gone back, right? Like, these cards no, let's just go play. Two. Let's just put malicious to one. That's uh, yeah. that's always something we should do. Yeah, I mean, that is the dumbest shit. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. All right. You know what? I'm in. They can't even care. Let's go. Yeah. Nerf hero next by putting malicious to one. You're right. They never <sighs> changed it from two to three. Right? They never put it to one. No, I'm pretty sure they put it to one. Uh, Prankatops. <laughs> Prankatops hasn't gone to three yet, has it? It was. A, is it two still? Right. That's annoying. Give my guy back to three. Bro, uh, no, Kalen sent me a list today yeah. for, for Dragon Ruler with, like, Pankertops and Fenris in it. <laughs> it's just... I'd, uh, I'd be down to play some Dragon Ruler cash here. Oh, that'd be funny. Bro, like, not gonna lie, like, he sent me the thing and I was like, you know what? I would play this deck. Okay, we're getting very much. We're getting very much off topic. Bad list. Um, I don't know. This feels kind of on topic. I think. I think one thing that I do want to say before I close this off is that, like, one issue that I have is that ultimately, I think this ban list did nothing. I think that it did a little thing that ultimately does not matter. I think we're going to see Snake Eyes. We're going to see Finsmith. We're going to see uh, Ubel. We're going to see Tempai played a lot. <laughs> And I don't think any of that has changed. I think I'm still going to get Gimmick Puppet. I still think that I'm going to see a Floodgate, Game 2 or Game 3. Um, and I think... Oh, look, let me make something very that. clear. If my opponent opens the one branded fusion and Gimmick lots me, they're catching hands. Like, that's just how that rolls. Well, I mean, they don't <laughs> even need to open branded fusion, right? Because they have, like, nine ways to search it. So, like, branded fusion to one doesn't change much. It just means that... Like, they just won't have it sometimes. No, this makes it a lot easier, because it's a lot more susceptible to go, okay, cool, the normal summon the thing that searches it, that you end perma, and then they're just like, okay, cool, I passed turn now. Yeah, it's Instead of saying, sweet, I already had it. This makes in perma a little bit better, but I don't think we play in perma anymore. It's also really funny that we have, like, uh, what is it, the Dominion cards? Um, the trap cards that negate summons. Uh... Dominus. Yeah, the thing that, that, you, that you do a thing, but you can only activate like certain attributes for the rest of the game, right? Yeah, Dominus. Um, if that, when a card or effect that includes the effect to special summon a monster, you can negate it. Like we have, we have three more copies of the Ash Blossom for against against branded. Um, yeah, it's just it's not looking good. At least this is another ban list that like. At least it's not another ban list where branded got nothing hit and we can hear for the next two weeks that branded is definitely the best deck there's no possibility of it not being the best deck um because they didn't get any hits like at least they got hit <laughs> i guess like the last thing to probably talk about is ycs incoming now are we under the impression we're getting another ban list before then definitely. and if so what are we hoping for like obviously but... we have to see how the format turns out like right now but you know um, so like at this point so if we're expecting probably gonna expect the ban list i'd expect it in the new year yeah i would say so, january um so like it'll depend like cause I'd, if we get another ban if our ycs goes back to being in uh back in january then we might not see one 
But if it's in March, we should definitely see one. Well, I watched this would probably be March again. It's just I don't know why they changed it, but um, if it's in but January, they get the, but also they're just like they have most of the time it's been in January. So yeah, yeah it's, like, we're like we've had one year where it was in fucking November. Yeah, it's and then we've strange. had one year where it's in March. So we could just go back to being in January now. We don't know. I think I think it goes back to Konami speculation where we can't know, right? So if the YCS is in January, I would say that we'll get one. Um, and hopefully it's in time that we can actually prep. Uh, if not, come also December. Won't be. Well, we'll it know. won't be. It we'll never back. We'll know. We, it's one. quite literally, we will, uh, it's always our YCS is the first one of the new ban list or the new set. Well, we, every single time. What I'm saying is, is we'll, I... we'll know, we'll know if we should start prepping this format or if we can wait by December because that's probably roughly when we'll find out when the YCS if not a little bit earlier I feel like they'll if it, when they announce it they'll if it's going to be in January they'll announce it like October sure I mean that still gives us plenty of time like it's yeah. not like I'm going to go sit down and lab out Snake Eyes or you bell or <laughs> any of these other decks right now for YCS because like I'm predicting that we're probably going to get it uh, like another list at some point soon mm. like it's not going to be six months and if it is six months I think I think that unfortunately we'll have another bout of Yu-Gi-Oh is dying because somebody summoned Snake Eyes Ash like six times I mean, we're always going to get the Yu-Gi-Oh! with dying thing. It never goes away. Somewhere, someone Yu -Gi -Oh! will find out a way to say that Yu-Gi-Oh! is dead. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! is dying because uh, it's still the second most, second highest grossing card game in the world. But it's dying because some guy on YouTube said it. Oh no, not the mighty YouTube. Well, now we can... You know what, guys? We can be the guys on YouTube that said you go with not dying. Let's go. Hey! No, Michael, you can't do that. Bow down to the mighty algorithm. <laughs> you know what? You're true. Uh, we live and die by the algorithm. Right. That's exactly right. This turned into an hour-long conversation about the battle list, and we spent about 20 minutes on the battle list. <laughs> this is I factually, mean... factually incorrect, but okay. I think we did quite hour, well. That was an hour long. You know, yeah, you can title it Shower Thoughts with Team PX3. <laughs> Shower Thoughts 1 with the three boys. You can be you before. Can PX3 Yu-Gi-Oh! like podcast just called Shower Thoughts. <laughs> you know the what? Dumbsketeers. The three Dumbsketeers. I don't even think we need battlers to do this. I think I think we should just start doing a weekly podcast. That's what we do at 25 plus, right? We start we start considering just doing a podcast and that's it. We just talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> once a week where we just where we just say and it's not even like factually based. It's just us just complaining or talking about things and we, then we get into an argument about Shifter or we get into an argument about X or Y and that's just our relationship and that's how it's been but now we're doing in podcast form right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah essentially look every every time we have a conversation it just goes off on a million tangents oh, at some it's... point we'll start telling old stories and it's... then at another point we'll start complaining about specific cards I was, It'll happen. I was so bad because our our argument about the mulch mummy cards from the five hours was probably the most entertaining thing of that five hour thing. And I was so mad because I was like, if I had more time, I would have just cut everything else and just uploaded that to Jimmy. I just would have just done that. And it would have been absolute peak content because it's just me complaining about these fucking cards <laughs> and you arguing back with me. And that's all we need for content. Oh, man. Right. I mean, I'm sure we could actually, you know, that's not a bad idea, actually. We could totally, we could also make content. Not not even just podcasting, but just like, just, just, you know. We get what 200 is views a week and that's it. That's all we need. <laughs> that's all we, that's literally all we need. And then, and then we win a YCS and we're the most, we're the most insanely, like, we're the most insanely professional people. Like, we're like, yeah, and so my opponent did this. And so, like, I had the out, and, like, it was just insane because my opponent just should have known that I had this. 
Like, imagine, imagine in like a year's time, right? One of us is, or, or a lot of us has topped a YCS. Um, and I'm retelling the fucking Abyss Dweller story of my opponent made Abyss Dweller, then summoned Morelli, went to Fect, and I went, kill back your Abyss Dweller, put that shit back. <laughs> Oh, see, we've done it. We've done it. Tangent, yeah. telling old stories. We got that. Yeah, that's what we've we did. literally, literally gone full circle. It's because it's my favorite YCS story because it was like it was just one of those moments where I was like, "There is no way you're doing this. Oh, you're doing this. There's no way you're doing this, my brother in Christ. Put the abyss dweller back." Oh, look, man, the t- like the T Y C S was goaded. T Y C S, it felt <laughs> I I still Bye. said I still said that like if man I really wish we had a better relationship with Jesse Cotton like if we had a relationship with him at all because I'm pretty sure if he knew that you and I were in the wise I'm pretty sure you should have been shitting his bricks like it just, it just we were coming for something oh I just look man oh the fact that I that oh don't look man I'm just gonna I'm gonna complain the finals me against him would have been so sick it would have been it would have been it would have been it would have been way next better. level would have been way better than what the fuck finals we had for wise years my oh goodness. my god should have just won the idiot I was I was it, it was out of my control I had nothing I couldn't do it I was more mad about my loss in top sixteen just by getting out variance in the most least variance format I've ever fucking played I was just so much more mad about that than I was about anything else. It's just, my man opens Instant Fusion game 1 and 3, and he milled Scattershot game 3, and I milled 14 cards trying to mill my fucking life out, and I didn't see Scattershot. I was just so appalled. And, you know, I'm just sitting here, I was sick in bed. Based. I had a great time. Based. Uh, Look, man, I mean, you gotta remember, I opened Instant Fusion 3 games in a row against Peck. (laughs) <laughs> and by all right like, it was just, it was just so funnily fun. enough it was actually detrimental because you Bruce, didn't you know right, instant fusion like I didn't have to play with instant fusion that's you so know, I hate you so much I hate you so much so like, like no <laughs> throw a wish at the bottom and like to the genuine moment of like pure panic when I was nursing I was missing Ashoka, I think, in top cut, and we were in game two, and then I ended up losing, and then he, he, he asked me the question, he's like, oh, why did you push this game? I didn't think you had any plays after that. I'm like, oh, I had instant fusion, and he and like he's just like, you know that like the instant fusion, the summon can't attack, right? And I was like, you know what, I genuinely didn't know that. <laughs> Fuck me. Josh, Josh, me and you are like the polar opposite when it comes to things. I'm sitting there going like... Uh, and yet yes. you would have been the one to beat Jesse Cotton in the fight. Yeah, hundred percent. You you love me. You love me. You love me. Um, it's just it's just so fucking funny because like because when I first wow uh, <laughs> when I got me and um oh no oh no oh god you got me I'm dead here. Oh, his brain died. Yeah, it did. That was that was easy. It's the sickness that got me. This is how I want to end the podcast. It's just me going, oh god, oh no, why? He was powering down. He's run out of things. <laughs> I've run out of things. Oh, me and DeMarco. Me and DeMarco first. Um, and we had an exchange because he knocked me out in August with Spiral. Um, and we had an exchange. And he goes, he goes, oh, I win roll. Okay. Instant fusion. And I go, man, you are not doing this to me again, motherfucker. You are not doing this to me again. And so game two and three, I had the instant fusion star. <sighs> oh, man. God, I, I, it's, yeah. I'm still pretty sure my greatest decision from that event was the super poly. I'm so glad I did that. Oh. That'll forever be my one of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh moments of all time. I did not drag my ass halfway across this country to not play more Yu-Gi-Oh. And then I bought him with this world the world's sickest Super Bowl. For the context for the people that are... Because I guess we're now a podcast. We're not, nothing's on the screen. I should really put Subway Surfers. Josh, Josh's... Josh's uh, for... 
my opponent, my opponent for the third, fourth playoff asked to split, and I, <laughs> my, my response was, I did not drag my ass across this country to not play more Yu-Gi-Oh. You can sit down, and then I proceeded to clap his soul in that? like the most vicious, the most vicious super poly of probably my career, like Yu-Gi-Oh career, because I had the Kelbeck, and I, he summoned the Rule Colos first. But for like he had, no, no I, I, I like he summoned the Dweller and he had the Rule Colos and then he milled. So I went Kelbeck your Dweller, and he's like Rule Colos, bring it back. And then I super polyed his Rule Colos and Dweller, and the Rule Colos didn't come back because he floated itself. And then I just opened him up. It was not fair. Just, oh <laughs> man, I just it 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 goes back to our 2016 meme of just splitting a KFC box. Split. <laughs> <laughs> the audacity, yeah, man! Who like, wants to split a straight wise piece? Bro, no, split? No, we don't. We don't. We don't split. We go all in or we go home. There is no in between. We we don't do that around here. Don't forget that after that, when we had to play, I did the I in front of everybody. I did the Vince McMahon power walk to the table. Like I don't give a damn. You're not. You are not ready for what's about to happen. <laughs> I feel like splitting oh. is like the most disrespectful thing because it assumes that we're on equal power level. Either I'm above you or you're below me or you're above me. There's no in between. Right, because at that point too, I was mad because I was like, in my head, I was gearing up for Tier Mirror Finals versus Jesse Cotton. And then I lost to like, just just the worst thing that possibly could have happened. Just completely outside of my control. And then at that point, I'm like, all right, the Joshua Hole Revenge Tour is coming in. Like, the next person to step step to me is catching hands. <laughs> and he did. Bro, like I said, the, just that was probably the most savage super poly of, I think, yeah. I think that, it, that probably makes it to, like, my top five Yu-Gi-Oh plays of all time. Right alongside uh, ref paneling a pot of desires. It's, just, it's game. <laughs> This game, funnily enough, just has probably the best game plan, like gameplay out of all the card games. But alternatively, it also is the shittest at the same time, and I don't understand how that's possible. Oh yeah, look, it's called variance. The highest possible highs and the lowest possible lows. Like, yeah, it just has that. What? <laughs> it's that's like the easiest way to put it is that. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. This was fun. Um, I'm going to send it to Jimmy, and I'm not even going to edit it. I'm just going to send it to him and see what he says. <laughs> just, just just, tell him to title it, Ban List slash Shower Thoughts. Okay, all right. <laughs> do you guys want to sign us out? What do you guys want to say? Um, I guess if you stuck around this long, thanks. <laughs> um, if I can't did, promise it'll get better. Are, if you did stick around this long... Comment what we missed and what you guys would like to talk to, uh, what we would like, what you'd like us would like us to talk about the next episode of Shower Thoughts. <laughs> bro, bro, like if if genuinely we want Shower Thoughts to keep existing, I need someone to tell me because like <laughs> it it could it could go hard. You don't even need to tell us that you want us to keep it existing. Just comment it below. Just be like, yeah, I was really, it was okay. I just want to know about this. And we will make shower thoughts too, okay? It'll be two hours long. Um, I'll put subway surfers up so you have something to watch if you're watching because this turned into a podcast. Um, this accidentally turned into a podcast. <laughs> it, did, it did. There's nothing interesting to show right now because I was not prepared. Sorry. Next time I will be. Um, I'll put a TikTok on screen as well. Maybe two. Means I have to download TikTok, but we'll get there. Uh, We're going too far into the, the, the rail. This is, this is too... Subway surfers Fortnite going on in the background. Like, <laughs> surely, but are we really ready for this? We haven't turned thirty yet. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. All right. This was fun. Um, Old to me, man. <laughs> if you guys did survive an hour and nineteen minutes, maybe an hour and twenty, we'll see how this pans out. It turns out it's a two-hour pre-recorded video. Um, yes, yeah, give us a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, we'll hit you with more content later. Hell yeah, dude.